and it's all of you and me. It's the physiological and psychological transformations that take place between individuals. And we have that to thank for it. That is the von Econom Economo neuron. It's a spindle cell in the brain. It is responsible for our species to have organization. We are, an orga we are a social species. We're not like lone hawks or lone wolves, as they say. It's also responsible for our gut feelings. It's responsible for our empathy. And what's amazing is whales have three times as many. Knowing that kind of made me sad, knowing that we slaughter whales and countries slaughter whales for whatever purposes, oils or food or whatever they're doing, to knowing that they are a social group, because you hear about whales having pods and, and all that, and it's, it's just sad. Okay, you know these guys, right? Okay, so a lot of people get confused between sympathy and empathy, and this is, this is my best way to try to explain it in terms that most of you can understand. McCoy is emotional. Empathy, McCoy, Spock, stoic, okay? Make sense? So if you're confused on the difference, McCoy feels your pain, Spock just knows you're in pain. All right? We're good? All right. All right. So when I'm talking to you and you're listening and not playing with your phone and you're responding, our brains start connecting. Amazingly enough, they've hooked up MRI machines to people like this, had them talk about something, and they found that their brain waves started syncing up. My brain and what I'm saying starts connecting with your brain and hearing what I'm saying, and it starts to emulate. That's amazing. That's empathy. And when that happens, you connect. So it's just like when you go on a date with that someone special, you finally meet the right person, you say, we connected, we clicked. That's it, right there. It really happens. It's not BS, it's not, oh yeah, you're just saying it. No, 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 this is what happens. What's amazing, as you get older, it gets a little harder. That's why little kids will go the first day of school and all of a sudden meet somebody and it's their best friend for life. And it's the first day of school, it's like, that's amazing. All right, make sense? Okay. Further research has shown there's a type of personality that are the natural born salespeople. These are what I call high EE. High EE is high ego, motivation driven, and high empathy. Somebody that has high ego and high empathy are type A salespeople. Now, do you guys know anybody that fits that personality? Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me personally, this will be the only thing I talk about myself. Me personally, I am high-driven ego, but I, I suffer, suffer in empathy, my wife will tell you. So when I was a little kid, my friends used to call me Mr. Spock, so that tells you. But I'm aware of it, and by being aware of it, I compensate and I work hard at it, and I pay attention to that I'm doing that, so I don't fall prey to that, okay? At the end, I was gonna do it at the beginning, but I don't have enough time. At the end, I have a link to take an empathy test. It takes five minutes. Take the test, look at your score. If you score in the teens, you might wanna see if you have autism. But if anyway, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I only scored a 32. I'm gonna be honest with you, I scored a 32. That's low. 40s or is average. But be aware of your score. It'll, when, you, when you actually start applying these principles, it'll make sense. And you'll see yourself and say, you know what, he's right, I need to work on that. And the things that you, that you struggle with are the things that will make you more successful. Why work on the things you're great at? Work on the things that you know you need to improve. We don't have the time to talk about drive. Maybe next time we'll talk about drive, but empathy. Okay, so you all have a card that I gave you, and it's kind of on thick paper so you can keep it. And it has the six characteristics for empathy. All right, so grab that, take a look at that. All right, so let's talk about this. When do you do this? You do this when you're meeting with your customer. 
Now, I use the word client and customer interchangeably, not like Florida Realtor Law. So just bear with me. If I say client or customer, I mean the same thing. You're meeting with your customer. You need to sit close. Do you know how ineffective and non-emotional text messaging is, right? People misunderstood because they don't understand the context. They don't understand the emotions, the feelings of what you're saying. You need to sit with your customers. You need to sit close. If I'm talking to Robbie over here, do you think it's going to be really effective if I'm this far from him? No. You'll, you'll get some, but it won't have the full effect. Again, this is because the way our brains are programmed, we need proximity. When you went on that first date with that someone special, did you sit 12 feet apart? Or did you sit close at a small, intimate table? Did you go to the movies and you sat next to each other? Okay. Right. All right, first one, emotional. Here we go. We'll pause for the Amber Alert. <laughs> Saved by the bell. Woo, I'm out of here. All right, emotional understanding. What do you guys think that is? Come on. Emotional understanding. Understanding your customer's point of view. Exactly. Understanding your customer's point of view. Understanding their emotions, not just the words by themselves, but their motivations. Why are they looking for a new property? Well, they're looking because they have to move. Well, how do you feel about having to move? I hate it. I loved my old house. I loved my old neighborhood. I loved my friends. I loved my publics. I loved that. I'm going to miss that. Or it could be the opposite. I can't wait to move. I hated where I live. It was the hood. It was garbage. Oh, we only had a Winn-Dixie. Oh, you know. I don't know. Sorry for those people that love Winn-Dixie. I forgot I'm in Florida. So, all right. It's understanding your customers' emotions and motivations. Next thing, respect. Have respect for what they're feeling. If you have the opposite effect of what they're saying, if they're telling you something tragic and you're laughing, you're probably a psychopath. <laughs> Wrong. Okay, respect what they're saying. Respect how they're feeling. It's their emotions. You want them to tell you. Tell it to me. How do you feel? How does it make your kids feel? How does it make your spouse feel? How does your dog feel? I find out. All right, this is important. Okay, question for you. Who's the realtor? The guy on the left or the guy on the right? Both or neither? Who's the realtor? What do you guys say? Both, right. Anybody for the guy on the left? Left, now we have some left. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's just a picture I got off Adobe Photoshop, so. <laughs> But my point is this, and this is, again, scientific proof, that the average realtor, according to NAR, is 52 years old, okay? 52. Average realtor is 52. The average first-time hold buyer is 39. 52 and 39. So here's the problem with that. The greater the age difference between two people, the easier it is to tell if they're BSing, to tell if they're not sincere, to tell if they're not being authentic. Remember, they already have a trust issue with you. The greater the age difference, the greater likelihood they're going to tell if you're not being sincere. Make sense? Okay. You want to be authentic. You want to be sincere. Don't just be a yes person. Don't just agree with them because they're saying that. We'll get to what to say in a second. But be yourself. If you're a Bernie friend, a fan and you go to their house and the, guy, and the guy's wearing a magnet hat, don't freak out. If you're a Trump supporter and they got a feel the burn sign in the front yard, get over it. Be a professional. Do your job. 